Hi, this is Dima from Tipco JasperSoft. Today I will demonstrate how to utilize context groups and variables in Jasper ETL. The goal of this tutorial is to get familiar with one of ETL job design best practices by introducing context groups and variables. Implementing this functionality will allow you to seamlessly run and deploy ETL jobs to various environments in your infrastructure. To achieve that, we will need a running Jasper ETL Studio and a running instance of Jasper ETL Tag, which stands for Town Administrator Center uh, with a valid license. Okay, let's start uh, with a very simple job to demonstrate the pros of using context variables. Here's the uh, commit interval job creates a CSV file and fills it out with random data. You can see that file name property is hard-coded. So let's run our job. You can see it runs fine on our dev environment. Here's our file. However, if we deploy our job to tag or, for example, shared with another developer, chances are we will receive, or rather they will receive an error about incorrect path during the job execution. So, what we can do here is introduce context variable named file path. Then set your default value, for example, this is and enable activate prompt on variable. Then we want to substitute this hard-coded value with our uh, defined context variable. Just uh, press Control Space in Windows or just type in context, and you'll see the file path variable available. Now let's run our job once again. Have another file created. In order to overcome hard coded values limitation, we can also define additional context. For example, we can define context with name UAT. for our UAT server. The uh, file path on UAT server will not change, so we can disable this activate prompt and variable and set our value. Okay, now let's build our job, to deploy it to tag and run it with the UAT context to showcase the benefits of using context variables. Good job. So here's a drop down which shows the context available. So for text server, we will use the UAT environment um, context. Excuse me.
we can see our file path, context, variable, or context parameters available over here. We can also override the uh, context variables values and apply, but for this demonstration, we're just using the default one we defined previously. So the job execution has finished and we should have our uh, CSV file created on a file system. There we go. Okay, so far we have only been talking about the context variables, groups that are local to uh, single job. However, if we have a list of context variables we want to share between different jobs, we can use context groups. So if you go to repository, you know, right click, you can do create a context group. have a list of variables you can define sample file path file name so perhaps you want or you want to have some of the uh, credentials shared you could do for password can actually do a password type. So the uh, you know the any value type in will be sort of a hidden. And you can define your you know, context over here as well. For example, you know, we can have like UAT as we did before. We can re rename the default one and for example production so you have several productions back up stuff like that and again you can have some of them you know Activated prompt. For example, if you want to, you know, activate file path only on dev environment, but for production and DOT, this will be left unchanged. Or, for example, the password does change in production. So you just enable the activate and prompt for your production context. Actually, I actually already have several context groups defined and used in my jobs. For example, the uh, database connection and the REST API. So I'd like to demonstrate how am I utilizing those context groups in my actual jobs. So this job performs a full backup of Jasper Server Repository using REST API. Hence, I'm using the uh, REST API context group. So if I want to back up my uh, dev environment, I just select the dev home context from the drop down run my job as you can see i have context variables used in various components
Okay, I can see that my develop development environment has been backed up. So now if I want to back up my test environment, I just select the test context group and run the job once again. Now I know that our test server host name changes very often, so I activated prompt on host name and JRS URL variables. Now let me actually change them and run the job. Okay, great. I have successfully backed up our test environment. Now let me build my job using the default values for test, but update those values on the fly in tech. Once again, I select test, this drop down. Generally name my zip file. Define new task in job conductor. Plot my job for test. Select execution server. So I need to change my host name and just per server URL. Maybe just that. The other way around, sorry. All right, so select those radio buttons, click save over here. And then we should be good. Okay, job execution has finished. And once again, we have backed up the uh, test environment. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for your time.